Hey guys, Tim here, Big Dog Forge. Um, got a special one for you this time around. It's going to be a little bit of a longer video, but uh, I think you'll appreciate it. At the end, there's going to be something special, so stick around and keep an eye out for that. First, a couple of uh, sort of housekeeping things. Um, I've been getting a couple of comments about um, blacksmithing without the power hammer, and uh, I have been neglecting my anvil a little bit and I haven't been doing a whole lot of blacksmithing. It's been a whole lot of fabrication, tooling, power hammer, that kind of thing. And um, I agree, I need to get to the anvil and build a couple of things that are just good old fashioned, old school kind of blacksmithing stuff. And I think that I'm probably going to do that before the end of the week. I'll come up with a project and uh, put it together. Maybe we'll, uh, I don't know, um, I think it was Lewis on one of the comments suggested that I remind people I know how to build tongs on an anvil. And that's probably a good idea. So maybe we'll do something like that um, if we got time, and I'm sure we will. So anyway, we get past that. Um, we're going to combine some... Uh, a couple of things here today and we're going to use some old tools some old scrap and some newer metal and we're going to put together a knife and first thing I want you to know is I'm not a knife maker never claimed to be one I've got the tools to do most of it but uh, I'm just not that great at it uh, honestly sitting behind a belt grinder for that much time bores me to death and it just doesn't hold my interest enough to get really good at it. So what I'm doing here today is to make sort of a point towards the end of the video. So you'll see what that's all about. And uh, uh, stick with it because I think that uh, you'll be happy you did when you get to the end. If you are a knife maker. Anyway, so here we go guys. Hold on. Thanks. See you soon. Okay guys, we're going to start this project with a leaf spring off the old Model AA Ford. And we're just going to clean it up, flatten it out, and leave it to a kneel here on the anvil. I'm not really sure what the composition of these older leaf springs is. I don't know if it differs from modern leaf springs. It uh, seems to harden pretty well and doesn't seem to be a whole lot different. They're pretty tough. So, for this project, we're going to give it a shot. Alright. So, the material that we're marking out here is some 15 and 20. It's thin material. So, we're going to cut several pieces and stack three pieces per layer for the 15 and 20. And we're going to put a leaf spring between those stacks. So, we'll have a stack of three, a leaf spring, another stack of three, a leaf spring, and then another stack of three. So in actuality there'll be 11 pieces in there, but once those layers of three are welded together, they'll essentially make just one. So there's going to be a total of five layers to begin with on this thing. Okay, and we ended up with 10 pieces. We really only need one, but one of them's a little narrow, so that's all right. We'll get these evened up on one side, and then we'll grind the other side down to the width of the leaf spring. Okay, here's our leaf spring. It's all cooled off. We'll mark it at the proper length, and we're going to take this from that end. There we go. And a little bit of a notch because of the hole, but that's no big deal. We'll weld our handle on that end. Alright. Knock the slag off these things with a hammer. It's a lot easier than a grinder. A lot quicker. I'm going to do the final cleanup of the grinder here in a minute. And we've got to knock it off all these. I won't bore you with all that. Go ahead and get these things cleaned up. 
So we took the big grinder with a hard disc on it. There's a lot of pitting in these leaf springs, so I had to take it down quite a ways on both sides, but they're pretty thick. Watch out when it's hot. Yeah, dummy. Anyway, so it's one side, we clean up the other side, and then take a soft disc to it. We have a nice smooth surface to weld to on both sides. And we cleaned up all the uh, pieces of 15 and 20. And I started stacking two, but we're going to three, so. And alternating with the leaf spring. And we'll add one to either side. All right, so now we have three, a leaf spring, three more, a leaf spring, and then three on the opposite side. And we'll even these up on one side and weld them up. And I'm going to put a lot of welds on these because those sections on the outside of 15 and 20 are pretty thin, and they're going to want to bow and buckle in the uh, forge as they're heating up on the outside. And we'll flip it over and we're going to grind this down flat so we don't have anything uneven hanging out of the side so we won't have to deal with that when we're forging. Alright, and yeah, we got clamped good and tight in the vise and we'll weld this side up. Clean up that end so we can weld that together. We don't want it opening up on the end. And we'll weld our handle to the opposite end. And that's where that notch was in that leaf spring from the bolt hole. And you can see it there. And we'll just fill that up with weld. This is going to be a sacrificial end anyway. I always lose a little bit with this stuff. There we go. It's two and a half inches wide, about five and a half inches long. And I think it's about an uh, inch and a quarter thick, something like that. So we get it into the forge and we get it up to cherry red and we'll get some flux on this thing all the way around on the seams and back into the forge and we're going to flux it a little more now it's a little hotter I don't want to take any chances I don't do this a whole lot I'm not super familiar with it so get it real good and hot and I welded it up three times. I have a tendency to do that on pretty much anything that I forge weld, just to make sure it's going together well. But in this case, yeah, I'm just not that sure of myself. I'm not the knife maker. I don't do a lot of uh, pattern welded stuff. So you can see a uh, dark spot developing on that and ended up being a bubble under the outside layer. Um, I drove a chisel into it, trying to open that up, a little flux in there, it didn't help, it didn't work, I ended up grinding that little spot off, it only went through the very first layer, you can see it there. So what I'm going to do is take a, uh, an old axe head that I've got, and I'm going to split this thing, you know, somewhere close to the middle. I didn't have a, uh, chisel or cutoff tool that would do this sort of all the way across in one shot. And I saw Jason with HOJ Forge do this on one of his videos. And I thought, hmm, I'll give it a shot. And it worked out pretty well. I uh, was surprised, but it worked really well. I guess, you know, anything can be a tool.
So it took a couple of heats actually to get all the way through this thing. The material is tough. But I got it there. And I uh, cleaned up the backside, wire brushed it really well, and put some flux on there. So I'm going to fold it over that way. And I'm not really sure if you're supposed to flux these things or not, but I got all the scale off that I could, and I figured, you know, fluxing it wouldn't hurt anything. I was afraid it might create a little bit of a barrier in there and not let it weld, but I wasn't sure, so. In this case, for me, it was, you know, better safe than sorry, and it worked out. This thing welded up pretty well. I kept it at welding temperature for you know, three or four goes under the power hammer and flushed it between each one and it welded up just fine. I didn't find any inclusions or anything to indicate that there was any delaminations. So that's what I worked it down to. And it's seven and a half inches long, about an inch and three quarters wide and about an inch and an eighth thick. So I cleaned up one side on the belt grinder and put some etching on this thing just to see if you know if there's any contrast in this metal at all. And that's what it came up with. And right along that weld seam there was a spot that seemed to be a lot lighter than the rest of it. I was kind of unsure about that what was going on there but it didn't seem to be anything to do with the uh, problem with the weld so took it over the band saw and I cut this chunk off the end and that's the part we're going to use for the rest of this project so we're going to weld a handle on that guy we didn't need the entire billet for this but we have the rest for another project another time there we go. We'll get this guy into the forge and work him out. Now what I'm looking for is something about six inches long and don't really care about the width but the thickness needs to be three-eighths of an inch. And it took a few heats under the power hammer. Like I said this stuff moved pretty slowly. It's a uh, tough material. But like I said, I'm not uh, real used to doing this. It's not my daily thing. For somebody that knows what they're doing, it's uh, probably normal, I would guess. I'm going to work it down and I'm going to use a piece of uh, 3 8 inch square as a kiss block to keep from going too thin because I need that 3 eighths of an inch on that piece of material. Started rolling on the side so a little clean up here. Gonna clean up the sides and then take it back down to 3 eighths a couple of times to square it up. And it came out pretty well. All right, so we're going to set that side for a minute. Here's the other part of our project. We got this old, you know, I call them a monkey wrench, and picked it up at a, I don't know, a yard sale or a junk store somewhere. I've got half a dozen of these things. And it's got a little burr on it. And take it apart. They come apart pretty easily. And we're going to set that aside and we're going to hold on to the end of that handle. And we're going to cut the little upper jaw off this thing. Little hammerhead looking thing. You get it in the vise. And there's a little step down right there just above that area. We're going to grind that down level with the main body and get rid of that material. 
And as you probably already guessed, this uh, upper section of this wrench that I'm grinding on now is 3 eighths of an inch wide. So the thing about these wrenches is that most of them that you run across that have wooden handles on them are made from wrought iron. You can see the uh, grain in there. And the thing about the wrought iron is is that it's got little to no carbon in it. So when you etch it, it just stays completely silver. So this is going to be the blade for our knife. And we're going to weld it, we're going to forge weld it, right to the bottom of that wrought iron piece. We'll square everything up best we can. And we're going to tack weld this thing. There we go. Now you knife maker guys would probably call that, I don't know, a guard? A bolster? I don't know what you call it. Here nor there. We get this thing in the vise, squeeze it as tight as we can. We got a couple of uh, variations, a couple of gaps there, but we'll take care of that in just a bit. All right, we'll put some tack welds along the side. We should be able to grind those out when we're all finished. So they shouldn't show up, but we'll find out. All righty. There we go. Now I cut that bevel at the end of that thing to keep from having to try to weld that square corner down into that what will be the knife blade. That ended up being a little bit of a mistake. You can see the bevel on that upper piece there. Alright, so we heat it up and we're just sort of forming everything together so there's no gaps between the two pieces. Now after I cut that bevel on the nose of that thing, I realized that uh, I was going to have a hard time hitting that with a power hammer at an angle like that to get it to forge weld, so I was a little worried about a delamination right at the tip where those two came together, but I didn't quite have it warm enough to get my flux to stick here. Kept dropping off, wasn't melting to it very well, so I just get it in the forge for a minute and warm it up. See if we can get it to stick a little bit better. There we go. Need that flux to melt on there and stay. All right. And it didn't take long to get this thing up to welding temperature. All right. Wrought iron welds at a lot higher temperature than most metals, and of course, carbon steel will start burning. So there's kind of a balance. It's a kind of a narrow window that you have to make the two live together. And play nice. But again, we got under there and uh, kept it at welding temperature for three heats in the power hammer. And of course, if you're not dropping things, you're not doing it right. And things kind of started going sideways on me a little bit. And you can see that wrought iron in that picture there. It uh, doesn't scale up much at all because of the lack of carbon. So I've got it at the anvil and I'm isolating where I want the blade to start and the body to stop. I have to maintain that square shape so that uh, little guard will slip back on it and fit properly. So I can't get that into the power hammer. And I use the sides of the hammer to sort of uh, draw that edge of that blade out a little bit. And my battery died, 
and I thought I was filming, you know, shaping the tip and hammering out the bevels a little bit, but I wasn't filming at all, no battery. So this is where we picked up. I had the uh, tip of the blade shaped and just started hammering out the bevels a little bit. So I don't know if I mentioned it before, but not a knife maker and don't have tons of belts and that sort of thing. So we're gonna go after this thing and uh, knock down a bunch of the hammer marks with a little soft grinder there. And then we'll get it over to the belt grinder and start working on it. And I started with, uh, it's probably a 50 grit. And after what seemed like forever and ever and ever, I finally made it down to, uh, I think I had a uh, 400 grit something like that having a heck of a time keeping the bevel straight we got done with that and we had a little distortion so we had to fit that guard back on and we had a couple of little areas that have a couple of little pits in it I think it was from grabbing it with the tongs in the wrong way or something so I did do a little more grinding that it didn't show here just got a little tedious we're going to get this thing into an etch, if I can get this clamp on here right, and we're going to see what this material looks like. All put together, and you can see that wrought iron stays nice and shiny because of the lack of carbon in it. And then we have, you can see the leaf spring, the dark area, and the 15 and 20. Now my etchant is at full strength and it tends to mute things because it wants to burn everything. So I have to do very short etches. And they don't come out super crisp. But like I said, it's not really my mainstay so I'm not real good at it. But And we only folded this once so we came up with a total of like 10 layers. You can see some of the layers of the 15 and 20 laying together in there. But it's a very basic, minimal layers just to find out what these materials would do together. And that's just how it came out. Like I said, not a knife maker. But for me, it's a victory. At least it came out knife shape. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to get this guard back on here. See how this all fits together. And we got our little wooden handle. It's the original handle. I wanted to keep it that way. I could turn a new one and put it on there, but I just like the look of the antique used thing. And the little nut. I had actually boogered those threads up a little bit in the forge, so I had to run a tap back over them, but they uh, they came out okay. And tighten up real good and tight. And there you have it. One each kind of, sort of, pattern welded wrench knife. A rope wrench. I'm not sure what you call it. But it was fun. And I do like the way it looks. Alrighty, guys. There you go. Okay, guys. So that was fun, actually. I had a lot of fun doing that. The uh, belt grinding was a little bit. You know, anyway, so um, we got to build that guy. Lots of fun. I kind of like the look of it. I like the way the uh, old fashioned and the blade kind of go together. A little offset right there reminds me of uh, maybe an old war thing or something. I don't. I've seen 
other people make knives out of these old wrenches in the past and they'll just take the uh, shaft and sort of um, just remove the material. Uh, I saw a YouTube video where uh, someone had done that and hard to quenched it. Most of these things are made from wrought iron depending on the vintage of the thing. Uh, some of the newer ones are a little more modern steel but if you get an old one with a wooden handle um, there's a I couldn't even tell you what year they stopped making them out of wrought iron but uh, there's a lot of them out there so if you're looking for something like that pick these things up what you gotta do is grind along the back a little bit and you can see the grain come out if it is a, uh, a wrought iron wrench and there's a lot of things that you can do with them so anyway this was fun and my inspiration was off of a YouTube video there was a young man making a uh, knife simply by taking one of these wrenches and he did a uh, stock removal and created a blade out of it and it was pretty interesting he did a good job of that and I picked up on that and went now nah, we can do something a little different with it so that's what we did so you guys are wondering why a guy who doesn't build knives built a knife out of this material well it was a very rudimentary knife and didn't have very many layers to it but it was sort of a proof of concept or to see how this material would react and uh, kind of get that across and I've wanted to do something out of one of those wrenches for a long time and I think I paid maybe 50 cents for that wrench or something like that so it was kind of a cool little project kind of fun so real quickly take a look at this So that's the material I used along with the leaf spring to create the knife. Uh, it comes from a friend of mine. He works at a uh, sawmill blade manufacturing plant. Uh, they service people all across the country and they end up with a lot of this material and uh, basically get it for free. He called me up and said, hey, come get it. And I don't know how long the supply will last, but um, I've got a lot of this stuff. So I know there's some of you guys out there that could use some of this stuff and I've got oh, way too much. I don't even know what I would ever do with all of it. So if someone could leave some comments and let me know how to figure out what material it is, not super familiar with testing to see if you know it's 15 and 20, if it's uh, high carbon steel blades, whatever it is, I'm assuming it's 15 and 20 because it's uh, uh, wood bandsaw blades, but there's no telling without trying to figure it out. It seemed to work out okay in my knife as a um, contrast and metal but there is no guarantee there so leave me some comments let me know what that is now what I'm going to do is once I sort that out I've got some of these uh, if it fits it ships boxes and what I'll do is we're going to start doing some giveaways to get rid of some of this stuff because it's overloading the shop so help me out with that and Next video, if we get enough responses, try to figure out what that is. Let me know what your interest is and let me know how I can test this stuff, figure out what it is. And uh, we'll put something together. All right. So thanks for sticking with me, guys. I know it's been a long video. Sorry about that. Um, I do appreciate you checking in with me and uh, share, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'm going to close it down now. So. Take care, be safe, and thanks for checking it out, guys. Bye.